Six Flags Fiesta Texas, formerly known by its boring name, Fiesta Texas, is an amusement park in La Cantera, San Antonio, Texas, that opened on March 14, 1992 by the Gaylord Entertainment Company. Construction started in 1988 to start clearing the 1934 created limestone quarry that the park now sits in. They officially started plans in 1989 for the park, which was built to rival nearby tourist attractions, including SeaWorld San Antonio, which opened the year before. At the time, Fiesta Texas was more of a live entertainment focused park than a thrill ride focused park. Although they didn't have many thrills to offer, the park did open with 14 attractions including two coasters and many rides that are still standing today. Many of the park's rides were family oriented, including the Grand Carousel and Die Fluttermouse, later renamed Whirly Gig and now DC Supervillain Swing. But there was one ride one coaster in the Crack Axle Canyon area that put the park on the map for thrill junkies in the big state of Texas. Named after the venomous snake that dominates this state, this coaster was the tallest, steepest, and fastest wooden roller coaster of its time. The infamous Rattler! Kitty Coaster! Really, dude? Really? Really? Oh. Oh, wait. No, no, no. No, really? like the big, the big wooden one. Yes, oh. yes, yes. Rattler. Duh. All right, Duh. all right. We'll, we'll, try, we'll try. We'll okay. try it again. We'll try it again. Let's do it. Yeah. The infamous Rattler. Iron Rattler. Dude, it's not iron yet. Oh, it's not. No, oh, it's not. Just no, no, no. Rattler. Yeah, just yeah. Rattler. Just Rattler. Just Rattler. All, all right, right, cool. Well, let's try let's it one more it. time. Let's try it Rattler. one more time. All right. The infamous. Rattler! Tattler! Rattler! Okay, I I'm done. The I'm infamous, done. The infamous... The infamous Rattler. That was it. That was it. That really? was the clip. Yeah. That was it. Rattler was a wooden coaster built by RCCA, or Roller Coaster Corporation of America. The coaster opened with a height of 180 feet, a drop of 166 feet, a speed of 73 miles an hour, and a total track length of 5,080 feet of track. The design plans actually never called for the coaster to have such a tall drop, but with the opening of Mean Streak just a year before, the park made a quick decision to come for Mean Streak's record, thus making the drop 42 feet taller than originally planned. Although this change brought massive hype for the coaster, resulting in more people coming out to ride, the park soon figured out that this split decision was about as good as the decision to drunkenly text your ex. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Many of the guests said that they suffered from neck, rib, and back injuries after riding the ride. Sound familiar? And the park ended up closing the ride to change the drop back to its original size. Once this change was in place, the ride became a lot less painful and was a lot more enjoyed by the general public. For now. Fiesta Texas had other major attractions to offer throughout the five areas that opened with the park. Crack Axle Canyon, Los Festivales, Rockville, Spassburg, and the Waterer Park, Old Watering Hole. All with a unique experience to offer. Los Festivales is a Spanish-themed entrance plaza that serves as a nice shopping, food, and entertainment area of the park. The area opened with two show venues, Teatro Fiesta, which is an outdoor stage with live music and other entertainment, as well as Zaragoza, which is an indoor theater that was commonly used for major performances. Both of these are still standing today. Keep going straight and you'll find Crack Axle Canyon, which is a 1920s Texan Boomtown themed area of the park. The area included Gully Washer, an Intamin River Rapids ride that takes you through a series of intense Rapids elements that soak almost every rider that rides. There was also Whistle Stop 39, which was the name of the train station in Crack Axle Canyon, where people could board the Fiesta Texas Railroad, a train that still takes riders through the various themed areas, plus into a really cool tunnel. Ooh. Lone Star Lil's Amphitheater and Sundance Theater were also in this area and served as fun entertainment venues for people to sit back, relax, and enjoy some shows. 
And of course, Rattler topped off the Crack Axle Canyon, acting as the main draw of the area. Just around the corner, you'd come to Spassberg, which is a German-themed area of the park that was home to the Grand Carousel, a beautiful carousel that was loved by families and kids. Die Flutter Mouse, a zero wave swinger, was also in the area and served as a fun swing ride that everyone could enjoy, as well as Stein Gas, which is a classic bumper cars ride. Der Pilger Bahnhof was the train station in the area for the fittingly named Fiesta Texas Railroad. Included in this area was a small kitty area which included the park's other coaster, Pied Rattler. Piper! Oh, 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 I'm sorry, dude. Oh, no, you're right. Oh, I did it again. <sighs> as well as Kinderbahn, which is one of these weird things. Some other rides that opened with this area are Renser Platz, okay, Der Fliegen Zirkus, and Kinderwagon. I can say that one. Next up is Rockville. Themed to a 1950s town, this area was the center of entertainment. Rockville is home to the famous show venue of Rockville High, was home to a live musical theater show that has a 1950s high school theme. The show was singing and dancing, and was a big hit with guests at the time of opening. Shows weren't the only thing Rockville had to offer. The area also included Motorama, a Mo Morgan Antique Cars style ride that featured 1950s style cars and took riders around the area between Spassburg and Rockville, and Power Surge, which was an Intamin Shoot the Shoots ride that served as a great ride for people to cool off on during the hot Texas summers and honestly winters too. The final area was named Ol Water and Hole, which was a free with admission water park. The area opened with eight fun water slides named Texas Tumble, which was a family raft ride, Riptide Runner, an open tube slide, Bermuda Triangle, a closed tube slide, Paradise Plunge, a thrilling body slide, Typhoon Twister, an enclosed tube slide, The Gusher, two open raft slides, Pipeline, two enclosed raft slides, and finally Triple Dipper, two body slides with three dips. The first five slides that I just mentioned can still be found in operation at the water park today. There was also a nice relaxing lazy river in the area called White Water Canyon, plus a fun kitty splash pad named Splash Water Springs. The areas of the park were very well received by guests who loved the immersion and beauty of the park. On top of that, the park debuted its winter-themed event, Lone Star Christmas, at the end of its first season. Lone Star Christmas had many fun added entertainment, like a Lone Star Christmas, a fun light show, and some cool shows like Home for the Holidays, a Texas Christmas card, Rockin' Christmas Eve, and Uncle Scrooge's Christmas Banquet. The year was very successful, and the park geared up to open the following year with a promising future. 1993 didn't come with any new attractions added or taken out. A Lone Star Christmas took over the park in December just like it had the year before, and just like 1992, it was a big hit. Although nothing was actually added in 1993, the park had major plans for 1994. The park had started construction on the sixth area of the park. Named Fiesta Bay Boardwalk, this area was scheduled to open with The Crow's Nest, a Chance Rides Ferris Wheel, Rave Runner, a classic Eli Bridge Scrambler ride, Bayside Paddle Boats, a fun paddleboard ride, Captain Willie's Shrimp Boat, which is basically a kiddie version of a pirate ship ride, The Wipeout, a Chance Rides Wipeout, SS Overboard, a Chance Rides Swinging Ship, and finally, Little Castaways, which is a mermaid-themed teacups ride. This area was a huge investment by the park made after the huge success of the 1992 season. 
while uneventful, 1993 was still a very successful year for the park, mainly for setting up for a great 1994 season. Fiesta Bay Boardwalk opened wonderfully for the 1994 season. The park also saw the addition of Seaside Golf, a mini golf course that sits in the plot of land where Poltergeist is today. Fiesta Bay Boardwalk got rave reviews from the park's guest, resulting in another amazing season for Fiesta Texas. The management at Fiesta Texas saw the success of their new Fiesta Bay Boardwalk area and wanted to capitalize on the opportunity to make it better. With this in mind, the park added Screamin' Sky Coaster, which is a Sky Coaster Inc. Sky Coaster ride that lifted riders 180 feet into the air, dropped them for a 30-foot freefall before swinging them back and forth, hitting 70 miles an hour at its top speed. This was an upcharge attraction, meaning that you had to pay extra after admission to the park to ride the ride. Nevertheless, this ride was extremely popular with many thrill junkies and gave the park another crazy thrill ride besides Rattler. In 1996, Fiesta Texas experienced the biggest change that the park has ever and will ever go through. The park was bought by Time Warner, later renamed the Six Flags Theme Parks, Inc., and renamed to the name the park still has today, Six Flags Fiesta Texas, thus adding to the Six Flags chain, becoming the eighth park to be added. The year 1996 brought two new thrilling attractions to the park, one of them being a roller coaster, Wagon Wheel, a Schwarzkopf Enterprise ride that was relocated from Six Flags Over Texas, where it operated from 1977 to 1995, was added into the Crack Axle Canyon area of the park. As for the coaster, Joker's Revenge, a Vacoma Hurricane coaster, opened on May 10th, 1996. The coaster, which was the only of its kind in America, had a max height of 79 feet, a ride length of 1,936 feet of track, a max speed of 40 miles per hour, and a ride duration of 1 minute and 24 seconds. The coaster took riders through a vertical loop, followed by a double corkscrew. It also had a special twist. The trains faced backwards, giving riders a truly unique experience. Joker's Revenge was located in the Fiesta Bay Boardwalk area and was yet another expansion to the area. Lo a Lone Star Christmas, the park's Christmas event, was renamed Holiday in the Park as well. And finally, the park got Fright Fest, a fun Halloween event full of haunted houses, scare zones, live entertainment, and screaming Tylers. There's actually a lot of scare actors over here. <laughs> Overall, 1996 was arguably the best year for the newly renamed Six Flags Fiesta Texas, as it was now on the course to become a thrill capital of Texas. In 1997, Time Warner once again invested in a huge addition at the park. They added Roadrunner Express, an aero mine train that still operates to this day. This ride takes you through dips, drops, and turns that are very appealing to young coaster riders in the making. This coaster still operates in Crack Axle Canyon today. Unfortunately, there were some things removed, including Rens for Platts, as well as the new Christmas show, Holiday in the Park. 1998 brought more bad news for fans of certain Fiesta Texas rides and attractions. Captain Willie's Shrimp Boat, Seaside Golf, and Bayside Paddle Boats were all removed at the beginning of the 1998 season. Outside of just Fiesta Texas, the whole chain was purchased by Premier Parks. The new owners added some rides to make up for the newly removed ones. They added Bugs Whitewater Rapids, a Hobskins Lock flume ride, Frisbee, a Huss Frisbee, and Durr Twister, which was a Huss Topspin. Premier Parks, the new owners, gave Six Flags Fiesta Texas a massive expansion in 1999, which included 10 new rides and attractions, including two new roller coasters. Daffy's Duckaneer, 
Yosemite Sam's Wacky Wagons and Foghorn Leghorn's Barnyard Railway opened as kitty attractions in Crack Axle Canyon. Kinderstein, a teacups ride, opened in Spassburg. Daffy's School Bus Express, Taz's Tornado, and Chaos all opened in Rockville. Scream and SNS Drop Tower opened in the same area next to the Fiesta Bay Boardwalk. Frisbee was moved to the Fiesta Bay Boardwalk, and Boomerang Coast to Coaster, a Vacoma Boomerang, was put right in its place. Also, Poltergeist, a premier ride launched Spaghetti Bowl Coaster, opened in the spot of the old Seaside Golf Course. This year was an amazing year for thrill seekers that lived close to the park. Plus, this was an amazing year for park management, as they were ecstatic to receive all these new additions and the Golden Ticket Award for the best theme park shows that year. The turn of the millennium was another great year for coaster lovers at the park. Well, once they figured out that the world wasn't gonna end. The park added a massive B&M floorless coaster for this season. Breaking the floorless height, speed, and inversion record, Superman Krypton Coaster opened to the public on March 11th, 2000. This modern thrill coaster stands at 168 feet tall, reaches 70 miles per hour, and boasts six inversions on its 4,025 feet of track. This coaster was a huge hit when it opened. Having the world's tallest vertical loop definitely helped with that. Some unknown facts about this coaster include that the park actually had to blast away some of the quarry wall in order to anchor some of the supports for the coaster. This coaster was a continuum of the ride package that was added for the previous year. Unfortunately, Daffy's Duckaneer was removed this season after only one year of operation at the park and ended up getting relocated to Six Flags St. Louis in 2008. In six. Uh, six Flags St. Louis, always just getting the trash stuff. Finally, the park won the Golden Ticket Awards for Best Theme Park Shows again this year. Fiesta Texas was supposed to get another coaster in 2000. What coaster, you might ask? Watch part two to figure out. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like down below. Comment below what you thought was the most interesting about this video. It took around two months to make, including writing the script, recording audio, putting the actual video together. Please share this with other enthusiasts, other people that might enjoy this, because I think a lot of people would find this interesting. Maybe not even enthusiasts, maybe just uh, people who really like Fiesta Texas, or maybe anyone. Like, you can share this with anybody, and most people would find this interesting, I feel like. Please, it took two months. Please, please share it with other people. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you are on the premiere right now, thank you so much for joining. Um, if you are, make sure that as soon as this is over, to hop over to Theme Park Updates channel, join his premiere for part two of the video. If you're not on the premiere, that's okay. Thank you for watching anyways. Please subscribe to Theme Park Update and check out part two. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing, amazing, amazing day. Peace out. So averagely to be safe, you want to go one, two, and then it'll show green on the screen, right? That's a lot of room, right? Averagely, most ride offs would just walk around and be like, not even touch it, just. And that's all they'll test the seats, right? Okay. Now, for some reason, when they see coaster enthusiasts wearing shirts, here's how they do it. So we go one, two, that's safe. We want to go one more. Just not make it so obvious. And then they see you and they're like, oh man, what are you doing? What's the trick? And then what they really do is just be like,